Hi everyone, my name is Anel Annandale and I'm an educational psychologist. This is the ninth video in my series on early learning and today's video is about concept development. I realized that I needed to do this video first before we start moving on from next week to the videos where I'm going to be showing you how to teach your child to read. Because it's absolutely vital that your child first understands these concepts before they try and tackle a big task like reading. Keep in mind that concepts develop over time. It's not something that your child is going to be able to do overnight. So throughout this video, I'm going to be telling you at which age your child should be able to do what. The first concept that we want to have a look at is laterality or directionality. Now that simply means where the children are able to tell left from right. So often in my practice, I see children who know all of their letters, but the minute you give them a word, they approach it from the wrong side. And so left and right are super important for reading. Now, it is important, before your child even knows what these concepts are, it's really important to get them into the habit of working from left to right. And so you can easily do that during tasks like puzzle building. Put the picture of the puzzle on the left and have them build it on the right. So they're always referencing from left to right. The same if they're working out of a workbook, so they look at the book and then do the work on a page on the right. And also with things like Lego building, for instance. If you have an instruction booklet that your child has to have a look at, always put it on the left so that they're building on the right. Now, initially, children are not really going to be able to understand what this concept means. From the age of about three or four, we only really want them to start understanding that left and right simply refer to opposite sides of the body. At the age of about four or five, we want them to be consistent in showing us what side of the body is left or right, even if they get it wrong. So that might sound confusing, but all we want them to know at this stage is that left and right are consistent. Your left could never get to your right and your right side will never change to your left, even if they can't quite tell which is which. And from the age of about six onwards, they should be able to tell left from right. Now we always want them to be able to tell left from right on their own body not on another person's body. You can explain that when somebody is standing opposite you and they are facing you, your right side will be their left side and vice versa. But don't confuse them by asking them to point it out on another person. There are several ways in which you can teach children left from right, but I find the easiest is to put something on their wrist. Now, you can either put a watch on their left or a red ribbon on their right. Both of these strategies work, but they don't work together. As soon as you put two things on children's wrists, they're going to get confused. So pick a strategy and just stick to that one strategy. The next concept we are going to be having a look at is spatial orientation. Spatial orientation refers to the concepts of things like in front of, behind, next to you, on the side, underneath. And like we've said so many times before, it's really important to expand your child's vocabulary about a concept. So remember not just to use one word. So instead of only always using above, always sometimes say on top. Or instead of just always saying below, sometimes say underneath. Now, children with dyslexia usually have underlying spatial orientation problems, and that is why they will reverse letters. Spatial orientation already starts at a very young age. When your child is filling containers and dumping them out again, he's really experimenting with social, social orientation. Spatial orientation, not social, that comes later. Also things like stacking blocks on top of each other or when they go through an obstacle course. You can easily build an obstacle course for them outside or even within your house. 
when they go through mazes, both a physical maze like a labyrinth that they have to go through, or if they're just working on those worksheets where you have to find your way out of a maze on a piece of paper. Sports, most sports like hockey, gymnastics, soccer, cricket, have some sort of spatial orientation element to them. And then if you are wanting to specifically do a task with your child at home, something like cutlery puzzles is amazing. So it's very easy. What you will need is you'll need physical pieces of cutlery, a spoon, a knife, a fork. And what I've done beforehand is I've just made puzzles with this cutlery or worksheet with the cutlery in different orientations. So the fork is above the spoon and a few other extra examples. You can see, I mean, cutlery is great because you can have it, you can lay it down in all sorts of different orientations. And then you show your child these pictures and with the actual cutlery, they have to copy that same pattern. The third concept we want to have a look at is body concept. Now you might be thinking to yourself, what's this got to do with reading, right? And so it's not directly related to reading, but your child needs to be able to have a good body concept to understand spatial orientation, to understand reading. You need to first know where your elbow is to know that it's above your knee. From about the age of two years, two years and onwards, children usually begin to learn the facial features and the big, you know, standout features like the limbs. They know where your arms are, where your legs are, where your hands and where your feet are. From about three years, children learn about the bigger joints. So they learn where their shoulders are and where their elbows are and where their knees are. And between the ages of four and five, they should be able to know where their wrists and their ankles and their hips are. Now, amazing games for teaching body, or for teaching body concept are things like Twister, Simon Says, uh, and lots and lots of physical movement. Because the more your children move, the more they're going to be becoming aware of the muscles and where the different parts of their body are. Fourth is awareness of time. Now, again, it's not so much related to reading, but it is very important for mathematics. Also, just generally, having a good idea of time is going to help your child to orientate themselves in the world. Between the ages of about three and four, children usually learn to say the days of the week in sequence. So literally just the rhyme, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Only from about five or six, will they be able to answer questions like what day comes before Tuesday or what day comes after Saturday? Now, also between four and five, you can start teaching them the months of the year in sequence, but it's still entirely appropriate for them to skip a month or to completely mispronounce the name of the month because we only really want them to know the names of the months and the sequence between the ages of about seven or eight. Now, colors is the fifth concept that we are going to be having a look at. And colors are so very important because not only do they enrich your child's life, but we use them in daily reference without even realizing it. Think about how often you might say things like, please bring me the blue cup or I found money in your yellow jacket's pocket. Now, initially, when children learn about colors, they only, want, they only learn the primary colors. So red and blue and yellow. We want them to know those colors by the age of about three. And from there, at the age of about four, we want them to know the secondary colors of purple, orange, and green. Now, most of you might know this, but just for interest's sake, 
We call yellow, red and blue the primary colors because those are colors that we can't make by mixing other colors. We have to get those colors from nature. Whereas orange, purple and green we can make by mixing some other colors together. Now from about three and a half they start learning about the other colors, things like pink, black, brown, silver, gold and all the different shades. Teaching colors really is all about exposure. It's really just about pointing out colors in your environment as often as possible. What you could do is maybe focus on one color a week and what I would do during this week is give your child a basket. Let me show you. And you want them to go around the house or around the environment just collecting as many things of that color, if we're looking at orange for example, that they can find in your house. Also a really good idea to teach not only colors but color concept is to give them paints where they can mix the colors or play-doh where they can do that. Now I know it's quite frustrating because what they do is they mix all the colors together right and then they get this horrible looking grayish brown dull color that they don't want to play with anymore. And even though it might be frustrating for you, that process of experimenting with color is very important for your child. If you want to save yourself a little bit of frustration, what you might want to do is just give them two primary colors each time to mix because then at least you'll get a nice solid secondary color. And a really fun idea also is if in this week we are just focusing on orange you might also want to choose a specific day and have an orange day so that you are wearing only orange clothes you only read books who have orange you know characters wearing orange in them or lots of orange pictures you can even try to only do like orange foods now that's much easier than it seems. So of course you can look for foods that are naturally orange like actual oranges or what I would do is just add a little bit of food coloring to white foods like rice and milk and pup. And then we want to move on to the last concept that we are going to be discussing today and that is shapes. Shapes are absolutely vitally important because this is how children learn what the letters and the numbers look like. I'm going to show you some examples. Now keep in mind that it's going to be reversed because of my phone camera, but you will still be able to get the idea. So for instance, if we want to teach your child what a four looks like, we are going to be teaching them that the four is almost like a triangle but that it's missing the right side. And a seven is an upside down triangle missing the left side. Think about the letters for instance, right? An A, where's my A? An A is a circle with a short line to the right of it. A B is a circle with a long line to the left of it and a D, where's my D? You get the idea. A D is a circle with a long line to the right of it. Now we're not only discussing shapes there but we're also using our comparison words and laterality so everything comes together. It is important to know that at first children will only be able to recognize shapes before they're able to name them. And all I mean is if you show your child a page with different shapes they might not be able to name them. But if you say show me the triangle, show me the square, they should be able to point to them. At the age from about two and onwards, children are able to recognize circles and squares. At the age of about three, your child should learn to recognize also the triangle, a heart and a star. By the time that they are four, we want them to also know the rectangle, 
the oval and the diamond. And then from five and six onwards, it gets very fancy. So this is usually where they learn about things like semicircles and crescents and hexagons. Like with colors, exposure, exposure, exposure to shapes is really the only way for them to learn. Again, you can get your basket and have your child go around the house collecting everything that has a triangle shape or a square shape, for instance. You can also cut out uh, shapes and have your child design pictures using only those shapes. So here's a very easy example, right? Really fun activity to do on a rainy afternoon, for instance. And then... Uh, tangrams, uh, about three or four videos ago, I spoke to you about the importance of tangrams and I also gave you a link to where you can find some free tangrams to print out. I'll just make sure that I include that in this article as well. And then it does help, I find with shapes, to actually have a poster stuck up in your child's room, whether that's a store-bought poster or just one that you make yourself. It just helps to reference the different shapes often. Now, there are two other concepts that your children also need to know, and that is numbers, or to be more accurate, the actual numerals, so what the numbers look like, as well as letters. But we have discussed exposing them to numerals in two, about two videos ago. And from next week, I'm going to be showing you how to introduce the letters to them. I'm really quite excited about next week's video. So I can't wait to see you then. Until then, guys, this is the last little bit of my video. And I hope that you all have an amazing week going forward. See you next week.